A Renault is not the first brand of track to think of when getting a new one, however, compared to our David Brown, it has been absolutely great. With the size of our David Brown 770, what it did was absolutely phenomenal, but with the farm's needs getting greater, like four wheel drive and a bigger loader, we had to make the change to a bigger tractor as well. To the untrained eye, white smoke might not look like much, but that much isn't normal, and it can cause problems later down the line. Can we all just ignore where the lifting strap is as well? Yep. Thankfully, there was no damage to cost. For anyone who's never done a head gasket, it takes a long time to do it. So long in fact it took us about three days. To get to the head gasket you have to take the bonnet off, the turbo, the exhaust manifold, the intake manifold, pretty much everything on top of the engine, down to the head. And because it takes so long, I'm going to put all this into a time lapse. which turns the like, turbine, yep. then goes through, turns it there, and then sucks it into the engine through the uh, well. Yes, you can get your torch and have a look in here if you want. You can have a look in there. And it fins bent to propellers, it does look it. Mm. That's some good nick to me. Yeah? So when it whistles, is that just the air going through? Yeah, but not when they start whistling, they're starting to look knackered. Right, turbo, a shaft in the middle, propeller at one side, one at the other. Uh, there's no bearings there, it just floats on oil. It might be something like brass. 
bearings, you know, what the shaft sits on some brass. Yeah. So it has to have oil pressure to it. If there's no oil pressure, it will seize up instantly. Like an engine. Yeah. So it has oil pressure going in. It goes into the bearings, like pressurising the centre there. And it goes out to the bearings, yeah? Yeah. So that shaft in there just floats on oil. And it spins like Yeah? So oil pressure in there, so if it goes in, it has to come back out somewhere, hasn't it? So it goes through and on the return pipe back to engine. And oil pumping engine pressurises it up and it just keeps going down. I thought it on a bearing. Yeah, they are. But might only be like brass, you know, like brass bushes. Yeah. So your shaft sits on the brass bush. And then with oil pressure, forces its way into the, around the shaft. So then that shaft is separated from the brass by the oil pressure. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So technically the shaft is floating on oil, but they're like brass bushes at either end to guide it. Yes, I know, a haircut is badly needed. So what's coming off now is the injector pipes, then the rocker cover, then the rocker shaft, and then hopefully the head. Oh yes, and the thermostat. See these head bolts here? Mm -hmm. How are you going to get to them? By taking the rockers off. Yes. Oh, one, two, three, four. And then the rockers. But, because it's a shaft, you don't just undo it all at once. You, you crack them all, undo them a little bit at a time. So it comes up square. Mm -hmm. If you, any shaft in an engine, you undo it at one end, so much tension at this end, especially on the camshaft, and you lift it all at that end, undo all the bolts and so the leaf and the tension equally, yeah. you'll break it. And I've seen it happen. Fortunately I've never done one yet, but right, so 14 on it. The, these have to be kept in order. Bolts. No, everything. Uh, these. So when it comes off, it's going to come off, down. So when it comes back on, it comes on. Yeah? Mm -hmm. One, two. How do you alter it? No, like, oh, setting them. Yeah. You have to. Oh, there's bolts on, aren't you? Yeah, there's different bolts there. Yeah. Bolts. On a car, they're like a screw here, we end up the nail underneath of it. You see, them's your push rods. Mm -hmm. We have to have them in order. I'll put a piece of cardboard in a minute. Like a cereal box or something. 
Right. Front engine. Right. So I've written on front there. Front. So these push rods have to be kept in order. Crack on first. Yeah. So they all come up. I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good start, isn't it? Yeah, what a stupid design. So with the injector pipes finally removed, we can now get to the head bolts and undo them. Tight. Oh, one of you. Oh man. Crack them all a little bit first. Guide yeah, us in. Is it that one? Yeah, the extension's coming. <laughs> Short one. on the bench we can now look to see where the head gasket's blown and because there was white smoke coming out of the exhaust it usually gives us a fair good idea of where it's blown as there's water getting into the cylinder and then compressing and trying to burn it and basically it just blows out all the water as steam. Whilst looking at the head gasket we're also looking to make sure that the head isn't cracked or anything as if it's cracked it'll cost a lot of money to repair it or send it away for testing and so on. Now if you see piston here, it's all clean round here so we know it's clean all the way round but it's going to look worse around that side do not it? So we have to get shut at water, drop coolant down lower so we just keep mm, shifting it round here definitely gone on number four because all those have got carbon in and have been washed off yeah mm. so we're looking somewhere across here aren't we see how your liners stick up above the block mm, to make the head yeah but this is why you don't turn the crankshaft and that's why we turn the before I accidentally press pause uh, basically that's why we took the battery terminal off to make sure that no one accidentally cranked over the engine. Push. Push. Go 
once more. Push. Not much, is it? I can't have seen that, I've been banking for the f***ing ass and I'm going to risk not sending Ed away for testing anyway. Yeah. Where do you send it for testing? Yeah, true. The crap testing and skinning. Do you send that at work? We could more often than not do it at work. Yeah. But I never did it fair again, I had it mixed twice on. Because we had to tighten up the head bolt 60 degrees after waiting 5 minutes, this little red thing here is uh, to make sure that the bolts are turned 60 degrees. It acts like a compass basically. To set the tappets you use a feeler gauge and sometimes if they aren't lined up properly like you can see here you can see my dad using a ratchet and a socket on the crankshaft to turn it over a bit to get the tappets at the top so we can reset them. Oh. Something just suddenly came undone. The spanner slipped off and I whacked my head right into a load of brackets. <laughs> Whee!